Hello, and welcome to the Mayday Paintings channel. My name is Blake, and today I'm going to show you how I made a Stay Wet palette out of this Ferrero Rocher box, plus a few other tips that make my life easier when painting with acrylics. So the standard Stay Wet palette is pretty big, as you can tell. And if you want to work on a smaller easel or a tabletop, it takes up a lot of room. There's also the handy palette, which is a nice size, but kind of small. The nice thing about this Ferrero Rocher box is it's a nice medium size. So, as you can see, this palette has been tried and tested and proven to be effective. It's a really good size of box for a palette. It's pretty much perfect for a palette because it's flat, it's not very uh, thick, and it's reasonably airtight. What's also convenient about this size for a palette is that it uses the handy palette size paper pretty much perfectly. So that's the paper that you'd buy to use for this size palette. So here's how you go about turning this Ferrero Rocher case into an acrylic stay wet palette. So obviously I've taken all the candy related wrappers and casing out, thrown that away, and I'm going to open it up. So hopefully it'll balance on the sink like this while I set this up. Whenever you buy a pallet like this or the bigger red ones, they usually come with a yellow sponge, which I think is garbage because it usually rots and gets stinky and eaten through pretty quickly after a few uses. What I like to use for all my Stay Wet palettes is just a white piece of cloth. So you can either use a t-shirt or like a tea towel cloth. So this is like a thin dishcloth. And obviously neither of these are very expensive. You can get a super huge 3X t-shirt at Michael's for like three or four dollars usually. I'm not sure how much these cost because I usually just get old ones that my wife doesn't want anymore, but I can't imagine they're very expensive. I actually prefer the tea towel cloth because I think it stays moist a little longer than the t-shirt for whatever reason. So I'm gonna start with my cloth. I've already cut this one down to fit nicely in the palette. You want at least probably four folds of the cloth. Should do it. And then I am simply going to start soaking the palette. So I just want to get the cloth saturated with water. Then I use ammonia to help kill any mold or anything else that might grow in my palette. Eventually, if you let a palette sit long enough, it's going to get some mold, but this helps slow it down. And if you're painting regularly, you usually need to change your palette paper before too much mold gets in there anyway. So. I've given a few swigs of ammonia. Now I'm going to take a sheet of the palette paper. And since my cloth is already wet, that's going to help the palette paper soak up water from the underside. And then I'm going to run some water on top And just let that soak for a little bit until the whole paper is translucent. So you might notice that I have extra space around my palette paper. That actually works to our advantage. 
because if you have a palette paper that goes edge to edge, the edges are going to dry out first because they are not in contact with the cloth. This way you have the palette paper surrounded by the damp cloth and that will keep the edge of the paper damp for longer. If you do have an edge of your palette paper that starts to get dry, it will probably start to curl up. So you can just kind of push it back down and maybe tuck a little bit of the wet cloth over the edge to re-wet it. Set this aside and look at an active palette. So you can see this is a palette I've been using and mostly the edge is keeping pretty wet. Um, sometimes, since this is acrylic paint, it's going to soak through your cloth. And you'll see maybe some acrylic paint build up under it. This one isn't too bad. But what I do, if I get a lot of color soaking through, that's actually going to start um, impeding the cloth from staying wet. If my cloth is starting to get dried out, what I'll do is I'll just take my palette paper off of my palette, kind of set it somewhere flat, and then I will rinse out the bottom of my palette. and wring out the cloth, trying to get out any extra plasticky uh, bits that are prohibiting it from soaking up water. So I don't really need to wring this out too much because I still want it wet. When I put it back in, I want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. could even now reapply some ammonia if you're getting some stinky growth in your palate. But this one isn't giving me any trouble so far, so I'm just going to lay it back in. I'm going to make sure my edges are in contact with the wet cloth, and I'm good to go. So this one's about ready. What you want is for it to soak up and be pretty translucent so you're not seeing some white. I still see a little bit right here, but for the sake of the video, I'll show you how I finish this up. It's not too complicated. I'm just going to drain the excess water out and try to squeegee as much as I can to a corner. So I don't have a bunch of water standing in the palette. There we go. And then I just want to make sure it's nice and smooth and add my paint. The reason I have this paint here is because sometimes when you're painting with a stay wet palette you're going to get water coming up through the palette into your paint making it a little weaker and less opaque. And sometimes you want to use a pure color for a background or maybe a white highlight or something like that. So it's good to put it on like a real nice uh, piece of plastic so you know nothing's interfering with your paint quality and purity. So that's what all these little puddles are. I think it'll be cool in a few months if I keep using this palette if the whole top is covered with paint swatches. So there you go. A stay wet palette you can make yourself. Really the only expense is the palette paper because that's the secret ingredient and if you want to buy a brand new t-shirt or tea towel to put in it you can but I recommend just taking your oldest one from your own drawer. My next set of tips is all about water. So one thing I started doing a few years ago in my water is having a sponge to kind of rub my brush against. You can't see it because this water is disgusting. But in this water jar I have just a little artist sponge like this and what's really nice is it kind of floats on top of the water, being a sponge, and I can 
rub my brush against it in the water and help knock out little particles of paint that get stuck up in the bristles. The other thing I've recently started doing is doing a two water cup system, much like watercolor, where if I have a bunch of paint on a brush, I'll get as much as I can off in this nasty water, and then I will go to the clear water to make sure my brush is as clean as it can be. If I have a lot of paint on my brush, I'll even wipe as much as I can off on my towel before I put it in the nasty water. That just makes sure there's even less paint in the nasty water and I don't have to change it quite as often. The other thing I like to do is to just lay a towel out on my paint table. Usually, I prefer to have a flat surface close, even if I'm painting on an easel, so that I can use this method. So basically, after I've rinsed my brush out, I'm constantly wiping it and twisting it to reshape the end of the brush. This helps keep the brush shape and extend the life of the brush. Mostly, this clean water is for rinsing off a brush if I want to use white paint or at the end of a painting session if I really want to make sure I've knocked as much pigment out of the brush as possible. I actually don't always clean my brushes with soap and water at the end of a painting day. Couple reasons for this. One is I don't use very expensive brushes so I don't invest a lot of time in cleaning them because if this brush is like a dollar or two I can just get more when these eventually wear out. In my experience, if you're using cheaper synthetic brushes, they're going to wear out eventually, so there's not a lot of point of spending tons of time cleaning them. The other reason I don't usually clean my brushes out with soap and water is because I think it kind of uh, messes up the shape of the brush faster than if you're just rinsing it out and letting it dry. If you have some clear water, and rinse it out and nothing's coming out of it, you're probably good to go. Also, kind of like the sponge, when I make bigger paintings with bigger brushes, I use this paint roller strainer thing. This just came in like one of those little trim roller sets and it fit really nicely in this old Tupperware. I used this a lot over the summer when I was doing big paintings too knock paint out of the brush when I'm rinsing them out. Very useful. Another useful thing I've discovered recently is using a sanding block to help prop up your painting. I kind of discovered this on accident because I just had this around my desk probably for sanding some edges. You know, sandpaper is useful. But if you're using a desktop easel like this, sometimes it's just useful to just prop it up a little bit, especially if you're rotating it and you don't want to be painting down here. I like to paint right at eye level. So this is really useful for maneuvering my painting up and down without going through all the hassle of readjusting my easel. When I'm painting on a bigger easel, I've also used this brick thing I think it has some sort of scientific purpose, like for micro pipettes or something, but it works really well too. The other nice thing about the sanding block is it has a little bit of texture to it. So your painting is not going to be sliding around too much if you bump it. The last tip I have for you is this very useful product. I'm not sure how long it's existed but I just learned of it recently. So it's basically a paint tube opener. So when you have a paint tube that's like all crusty and hard to get open, you can just put this around the cap and twist. It also has a few different sizes for different size paint. So you can use it for watercolor or, you know, big old paints. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this is a help to you. And if you have any tips for acrylics, leave them in the comments below. Or if you have any questions for me, you can leave those too. Remember to subscribe to this channel for more painting content and follow me on Instagram at Mayday Paintings. See ya!